Alrighty, hello everyone, this is Chakrit, and what I have for you today, I'm going to be talking about how I derived all the different PD patterns. Um, I was able to not only count up how many patterns there are, uh, but I was also able to derive the times that each of those would take based solely on the route. It doesn't count anything having to do with like when he lands, um, like whether or not he gives you a tornado. Uh, those kind of time losses are already kind of known, like a tornado loses you two to three seconds, um, and tornadoes are slightly more likely to appear, whatever. I'm not caring about that. I'm mainly caring about uh, this crazy map right here, where you don't really know uh, which way he's going to go. And uh, basically, for those of you not familiar, maybe you're not that into Sunshine Speedrunning, or you're just new to the scene, or you're stumbling upon this video, and you've never played the game. Basically, the way that this fight works is you go up top here, um, you wake up Petey, he comes down from the hills, and he starts at this red dot here. Um, and he's going to travel along all these paths, whatever, he's going to choose a route, and basically um, you can only spray him down to do damage at the blue dots. So there's eight blue dots here, there's five red dots, he'll, he'll travel through these to get to the next blue dot, but he... But not necessarily. He might go from blue dot to blue dot, for example. Um, basically, you have to hit him three times. You have to ground pound on his belly three times. And you can only do that at these blue dots. So the question is, uh, not only how many routes are there, uh, but what are they? And um, how long do you lose? Uh, so it's kind of been known that this path here, where you start at the, bo at the top, you go straight down, and you go straight down been kind of known for a while that that's really the best pattern that he can give you. Um, and then there's some other patterns like this one here, or even this one, that are pretty good. Uh, that he can pass through three blue spots pretty relatively quickly. Um, but which ones are actually best, and also which ones are actually worst? Like how much time can you lose on this level? Um, so the first step in this was to derive basically all the different times uh, that each of these edges takes, because for a while, uh, give me a sec here, I did not actually know this This whole map was empty. I knew what the map looked like, but I didn't have any of these edges filled in. I didn't have any of these times filled in. So basically what I went and did is I recorded some footage. I used Dolphin Emulator. This is kind of my methodology here. Used Dolphin Emulator for uh, when he arrived at a node, basically he kind of turns to head directly toward that node, he always travels in a straight line. So I timed it in a uh, video editor, video editing program. Basically the first frame that he rotates um, is the first frame that I counted, and again the first frame that he rotates at the next spot is the last frame that I counted. So that's how I derived these times, these are all in seconds. Um, I've kind of labeled all these nodes. Um, the uh, he can travel along either direction of a of an edge, so he can go this way, or he can go back. Um, he can't go back from a, a node that he just came. Uh, so, for example, if he came down from this spot and he goes to node 2, he can't just go straight back to node 1. He has to choose a different path, not when he came down. But it is possible for him to loop, so he could come down to node 1, go through node 2, go through S1, then do that loop. It's actually possible for him to do three times for you to get S1 as your spot three different times. It's very rare, but it's totally possible. Um, he just can't go along the path that he just used. Um, and he can go along either way. I'm assuming that these times are accurate enough, especially for RTA. Um, if someone wants to correct my timing or maybe make them a little bit better, uh, by all means feel free. The program I wrote to do all this is modifiable. You can totally change those times uh, it doesn't have to be these times exactly. Um, I can tweak that, and maybe some routes will change in tier or change in speed based on the proper timing, but this was more than good enough. I felt I was timing it to the frame relatively accurately. Um, and then these times here, they're a little bit less important. Basically, this is the time when you spray PD at a blue spot. It takes some time to fall, and then after you've done attacking him, it takes him some time to fly back up into the air before he starts moving to the next spot again. So that's what these times are, basically, when he falls to one of these spots, and when he rises from one of these spots. They're relatively the same across the board, 
uh, to simplify how I time stuff out, I basically just took an average of all these times, and uh, that's kind of where you're at. Um, so this basically every spot he's going to take about this much time per spot, but the thing is he falls, rises, falls again, rises, falls a third time. He doesn't get back up again because you've already killed him. So basically this is three times this average value and this is two times that average value. So you're going to lose about ten and a half seconds to just just doing the boss battle. Um, and again, this doesn't count tornadoes or anything like that, but whatever. That's beside the point. That's kind of moot because... Um, I mean, that stuff can be worked out, but I just don't know the actual probabilities for uh, whether or not he's going to give you a tornado. Um, I don't think they're 50-50, but that's whatever. Um, so after a couple hours, basically I had enough footage to fill all these, all this table out, and I went into um, Visual Studio. Uh, I coded this in C++. It's a pretty simple program. Um, basically all it does, uh, I've got a few structures here for a route. Basically this is a list of points that he can go to, um, and how many times he's hit a spot that he can stop at, and how much time that route takes. Um, then there's an edge that's basically point A and point B, how much time it takes to travel between the two. And then there's nodes, that's basically every point is a node. Uh, it has a name where you are, and it has a uh, list of its neighbors. So, like for example, N1 here, uh, it's a node, its name is N1, it has four neighbors, S8, S1, N2, and S4. Um, basically, he can go any one of those four ways, unless he just came from one, but that's irrelevant. So, those are the three kind of structures. I have all the data entered in these two functions. These are all the edges, and these are all the uh, nodes. These are all these all the points. Um, then I have this function uh, to find an edge, basically given a given point A and B. You can figure out what the time is at that edge. And it'll return that. Um, same with similarly. I have find node where, uh, given the list of all the nodes and a uh, the name of the node, the name of the spot, it can figure out all of its neighbors. It can find all of those neighbors from a list. Um, and basically, all this does is I f uh, I feed it in a starting position, which is always n one. He always comes to n one first, um, so he's going to start here, and then. Uh, make a list, basically a vector of routes, this is all the to-do list, whatever. Um, he starts at N1, looks at all the neighbors, and adds now four routes. So for example, let me pop back into Excel here, um, just to kind of illustrate the way this works. So basically I feed it in N1, it takes that, it looks at the neighbors, and it says, oh the neighbors of that are uh, S8, the neighbor is S1, the neighbor is N2, and the neighbor is S4, right? Now there are actually uh, four routes in the list. N1, oh, heck. N1, N1, N1. Now there are four routes in the list. And it says, okay, well, my list isn't empty still. So what are S8's neighbors that aren't N1? Uh, well, there's only one, it's N4. And what are N4's neighbors that aren't S8? Because it just came from there. S1 and S2 and N6. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six routes in the list. Basically it continues on like this for uh, as many routes as there are and then there's some kind of check in place. So for example if we continue this out he could go to N6 and after N6 he goes to S3 and then after S3 he could go to S2. So there's some kind of check that says oh I went from N1 to S8 to N4 N6 to S3 to S2. I've hit three S's, I should stop. This route is complete. Um, and then it calculates the route time and then publishes that to the results list, which is uh, here, basically. I have a vector result. Uh, if, the, if the success count is three, I put it on the stack of results and I continue. I skip all over this junk. 
and otherwise all of this code is doing exactly what I just said, just finding the neighbors, um, figuring out which ones it can actually go to, adding those to the to-do list, and then continuing on with the next item on the list. Um, it basically keeps going like that. If it's a complete route, it gets pulled off the list. If it is an incomplete route, it finds the next node, or all the next possible nodes. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's uh, go ahead and compile and run this. Um, it's going to think about it for a second here. Basically, it's just compiling them all. So there we go. We have a big ass list of routes here. So indeed, the first one takes for the route 24.481 seconds. So basically 25 seconds. And it's exactly what we expect N1 to S2 to S3. Uh, which is this route, right? That's the one we've known about forever. Um, of note, the next best route after that is actually this route over here, S4, S5, S6, and it's five seconds slower. Or, no, excuse me, four seconds slower. Three seconds slower. I can math. I know how to math. Um, but basically, there's a big long list. Um, I posted this on Twitter yesterday, I figured out that the total number of routes is actually 774, and incidentally this list is actually sorted. Um, this route takes 83.9, so basically 84 seconds, um, instead of the, what was it, 24? Yeah, 24 and a half. So you can actually lose quite a bit of time to PD. That's why people hate this level. Um, and just for out of curiosity, let's follow this route. Uh, it goes from N1, that's the starting point, to N2, to N5, to N3, down to S3. There's your first hit. Now it goes over to S N6, up to N4, goes through the middle here to S1, that is your second hit. And then, if you can kind of guess here, it actually goes back up and does this route one more time and it hits, that's where you kill him. Uh, so it's a pretty long route. This is actually the worst RNG possible. Um, and also, this does not count tornadoes, like I said, so every tornado loses about two, two and a half seconds. So the gap between best and worst RNG, so if this had three tornadoes on it, that'd be about, uh, what's that, 90, 91 seconds. And if this, had no tornadoes on it, it'd be 25 seconds. So simple napkin math, you can lose about 106 seconds. No, no, I can, I can math. A minute and six seconds, not 106 seconds. Um, yeah, you can lose about a minute and six seconds, and obviously execution isn't perfect. Um, there's some rotation time in there. There's some other like minor things, maybe my timings are slightly off, but you can lose about a minute and 10 seconds to PD basically solely on luck um, and it's pretty ridiculous now note that the all of these routes none, not all of these are equally likely um, but I mean this is a list of all the routes it's pretty comprehensive um, I will make a post look down in the description there will be a paste bin with my source code um, I'll probably even put it on Gip, github actually there will be a paste bin of this guy um, yeah, you should be able to run and compile this code. It's just one file. Uh, if you have Visual Studio, it's free to download Visual Studio Express or Community, whatever they call it nowadays. Um, you should be able to compile that and run this on your own. You can, tr like I said, my timings may not be perfect, but I think they're pretty good. Um, all in all, this uh, just took me about three hours to gather footage, three, three and a half hours to gather footage uh, using Dolphin Emulator. I was on version uh, 50321, 5.0-321. Um, you could be on a newer version, it might be less glitchy, whatever, but I think it was pretty accurate. Um, if you want to time it on console, that's by you. I'm not going to do that, because that's fucking insane. Um, and then, uh, yeah, otherwise, I think that that about sums it up. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, anything else you want me to look at in the game, uh, I'd be glad to, if there's any and that's the other thing, too, I wanted to mention, is that this code that I have, it can be modified. Um, just the whole idea of having a route, having edges with times on them, having different paths that you can take, 
this can be modified to map red coin routes. This could be modified to map 100 coin routes. Um, you just need to uh, time out each individual edge, each individual length. Um, you don't actually have to time out like an entire route and then another entire route and then another entire route. If you time out each individual edge, which in this case there are 24 edges, so time 24 different things to come up with all 770 routes, um, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty cool. And this would be totally useful for not just SMS, but for SM64. It could be useful for uh, other games as well. Uh, if there's any kind of collectibles, I know uh, maybe Psychonauts has collectibles. Uh, Ukulele is coming out that's probably going to have collectibles. This would be easily modifiable, basically just a brute force way of timing out routes. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, drop me a like, drop me a follow, drop me all that shit. My social media is down in the bottom left of the screen there. Um, yeah, I look forward to doing more stuff like this in the future. Uh, that's all for me. Take care. Bye-bye.